Hello everybody and welcome to our video for 9.5 notes which is using the quadratic formula. Uh, in this notes we are going to be going through what is for some people the most difficult section of Algebra 1. Um, it is the most ugly looking uh, problems that we'll have to deal with but for others this is something that they really like over the other methods we've been going through for chapter 9 which is solving quadratics because this is a formula so really all we're going to be doing for these problems is taking three numbers plugging it into our formula and then just doing some order of operations here so like i had talked about already we are um, focusing this chapter on solving quadratic equations which is solving where solve an equation where we have x squared as our highest degree and x squared is in our equation so so far we've done solve by uh, square root method we did solve by graphing and now we're jumping into um, solving using quadratic formula now one other that we haven't talked about really explicitly this chapter because we kind of addressed it more so last chapter was solve using factoring um, so that is going to come back up. Um, you'll also notice here we jumped right from, I think it was 9.3, which was the solve using square roots, um, right into 9.5. We did skip 9.3, uh, or sorry, 9.4. That is something called factor, or sorry, completing the square, which is usually kind of an extra thing in Algebra 1. We don't utilize it that often in Algebra 1. Um, we will cover it again in Algebra 2. Um, so just with everything that's going on, it is it is the most difficult way of solving. It's the most complicated and also the least utilized. So I just chose to skip that section. So if you're confused why we went right from 9.3 to 9.5, that's why. Um, it is where this formula comes from, the kind of the where it was derived, originally figured out. It was using completing the square, which if anyone's curious and wants to see where this formula comes from, let me know. Usually that's something we'll go through again in Algebra 2, so I'm not super concerned with it right now. Really, my big concern for you as Algebra 1 students is that you can take this quadratic formula and utilize it on an equation. So what quadratic formula is, it's a formula, just like it sounds, um, that lets you solve for x, find the solution, solve for x, for any quadratic equation. It does not matter if it's factorable, if it's not factorable, if you can graph it easily, if you can take square root method it, any of those things, quadratic formula will always work. It's kind of old reliable. It, it will always give you a solution, if it's possible. So, it is really ugly, it is really complicated. Um, it is something that usually I would have you guys memorize. And since, you know, this is something we utilize all the time, um, being able to know what this is and being able to utilize it right away without having to look it up or have a note card. Um, obviously, in the situation that we're in with being at home and, and not being able to learn direct, directly from me um, and have that same amount of instruction, expectations are adjusted a little bit. So since you're never going to be having to work anywhere where this is not already given to you or available to you or you could look it up, this year for you guys and as Algebra 1 students, you will not have to have this memorized. Eventually when we utilize it again in Algebra 2, it is something you have to have memorized. So there is little memorization tricks to it. Most people put it to a song, which how could you put this to a song, but there is ways of doing it. Here, um, our formula is x equals negative b plus or minus. So we saw that back in square root method. We have both addition and subtraction happening in this formula together. Uh, the square root of b squared minus 4ac, so minus 4 times a times c, and that's all over 2a. So what most of the time people, people put it to tons of different tunes, and if you ever are just bored, which maybe right now you're bored and want some entertainment, you can go on YouTube or go on wherever and look up different quadratic formula songs. I've heard some put to Adele. I've heard them put to all different kinds of songs. Um, but the most common one, the kind of the old school one, is Pop Goes the Weasel. Um, 
which would be like x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So that's on recorded. That's, that's awesome. Have fun with that, whatever you want to do with that. Um, but that's usually the song that people put to it. It just helps people memorize it. Again, for this year, for you guys, right now, you don't have to have it memorized. You just have to be able to use it. So eventually, when it just gets drilled so deep down in your long-term memory, like it is in mine, you can just kind of spit it out real fast, like x equals negative b plus or minus squared b squared, b squared minus 4 acl over 2a, which is awesome, totally useful, and I totally use it all the time, you know, outside of the teaching world. Not really. Only a handful of times I've had ever actually used quadratic formula out in the wild. Now what this formula is, you notice all three of my variables here besides my x, which is what I'm solving for, are a, b, and c. And that correlates back to my equation in standard form. So you can say here, see here in the parentheses, when my equation is ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero, and here we have to have a value for a, it can't be zero, so we have to actually have a squared term. This formula gives you the solution to your equation. Now this, again, is complicated, so this is usually our last resort um, because it takes a while to get used to and it's a little bit more tedious in terms of the work, but if it's something that's not factorable and you can't figure it out, if you don't have a way to graph your equation, either using Desmos or a graphing calculator, where you can just find the x-intercepts. If you can't just take the square root of the equation, then this is the this is the the kind of method that we have to go with. So we're going to just go ahead and do that. We're going to jump right into example A. So in utilizing these, our first step has to be getting it equal to zero. Because if you noticed up there in the instructions, this is my formula when ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So before we can identify a, b, and c, we have to know that it's set equal to zero, which in this case, it is. It's already done for us. So now what I'm going to do, you can choose whether or not you want to do this every time, or maybe just while you're getting used to it, I would definitely suggest it. I actually write out what my three values are. I say here's A, here's B, and here's C. It just makes it easier for us when we get to the formula. You putting things in the right spot, substituting the right number in, just makes it easier if we have it explicitly written out. So remember here, A is whatever is attached to my x squared term, B is whatever is attached to my x term, and then C is the constant all by itself on the same side of the equation. And signs matter, big time. Signs are hugely, hugely important, especially with these problems. Because a sign here or there could be the difference between actually being able to solve the equation and having no real solution. So here, the value, the sign out in front to the left of your coefficient is the sign that stays with it. So here, my three and my five are both positive because it was positive out in front. My C is a negative 7 because it was minus 7. So, my other suggestion, and guess what I usually suggest to help people memorize this, is write down the blank version first. So, x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So now I'm just going to go through in my equation, in my formula, and substitute all of my a's with 3's, all of my b's with 5's, and all of my c's with negative 7's. So what that looks like, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2a. So really complicated, really ugly looking, but that's all I'm doing. I'm just doing some substitution here. And now it's just a giant order of operations problem. So 
with PEMDAs, we do have kind of different layers here. What I would suggest doing is working in my radical first. So I'm gonna, there's two terms in my radical, my squared term, my B squared, and then my 4AC term. So I'm gonna do each of those. And then kind of simultaneously, as I'm simplifying, I'm gonna, I'm gonna work on my negative five out in front and my two times three in the denominator. Because you have to simplify separately first. So this becomes just a negative five plus or minus the square root of uh, five squared is 25. And then if I look at my next one, I've got negative four times three, which is negative 12. Negative 12 times seven is a positive 84. Positive 84, so plus 84. And that's from right here. That's negative four times three times negative seven. That comes out to a positive 84. And then down below, all the way over there, two times three is six. So as I continue, now I can simplify underneath my radical, 25 plus 84 is 109. So negative five plus or minus the square root of 109 all over six. <clears throat> and now there's nothing within each of those three different pieces that I can simplify. So what I have to do now to find my actual x values, because this is still x equals over here, I just stopped rewriting it. Just like one of those square root method problems, when I have plus or minus in my equation, this answer right here, x equals negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 109 all over 6, really represents two different solutions. And do one of them in red, and blue. Once, I want to evaluate where it's the plus symbol. And once, we'll do this in pink, where I'm going to evaluate with the minus sign. So negative 5 plus square root of 109 all over 6, and negative 5 minus square root of 109 all over 6. And this is where your calculator is going to come in really handy. Obviously, I'm not going to expect you to be able to do the square root of 109 off the top of your head. Um, you're going to have to use your calculator for that. So if I want to continue this blue one, square root of 109 should be a little bit more than 10. If you use your calculator, I'm just using my calculator in person here, square root of 109 you should get 10.44030651 if you're getting really specific. For our class, two decimal places is where I want you guys to round to. So square root of 109 then, if we round to two decimal places, is negative five plus 10.44 all over six, which means this over here actually we can go ahead and say that's negative 5 minus 10.44 all over 6. So now I'm just going to go ahead and continue. Negative 5 plus 10.44 is 5.44 all over 6. Which if I do that calculation and round to two decimal places, 0 0.91 0 0.91 if I go ahead with my other one here in pink negative 5 minus 10.44 is a negative 15.44 and divide by 6 if I round that to two decimal places I end up with negative 2.4 I don't know where that actual dash came from. Negative two, stop. Negative two point fifty-seven. Really, really ugly. Super complicated. Not very nice. But those are my two solutions: zero point ninety-one and negative two point five seven are my two solutions. Or you can just keep them separate.
doesn't really matter if you want to list them together. If you want to list them separate, that is up to you. As long as when you're listing them, you don't try to, to pull one of these and say, hey, my answer is negative zero, or sorry, 0 0.91 comma negative 2.57. That, that gets really, really dangerously close to being an ordered pair, where this is my X value, this is my Y value. So let's not make that mistake. Just don't throw parentheses around there, and then we're good. Or, if you don't want to even try and mess with that, then just do this thing and just list them separate. Really complicated. You can see it's a lot of steps in the process, just because it's a really, really complicated formula. But the nice thing is, it's the same steps over and over again. So the more times that you use this formula, the more times that you plug stuff in and simplify and do these steps, the easier it becomes. Okay. So if you got lost along the way somewhere, the beauty of a video is that you can pause it right now, go back to where we started the problem, kind of just keep you know, scrolling back until you're back to the beginning of the problem and listen to me explain it again. Slow it down. If you want to even mess with the the playback speed on YouTube, you can go ahead and do that and play me at, at half speed if you want to slow it down that much. Then go ahead and do that. But for those who are ready, we're going to go ahead on to example B, which is a little bit more complicated. For example B, we do have something to do before we actually get into labeling what A, B, and C are. Because again, we cannot use my equation unless it's set equal to zero. So I'm going to have to rearrange this equation a little bit to get everything on one side of my equation with zero on the other. So my first step here is actually going to be moving this 2x over to the other side with my x squared, a 2x squared and my 3, so that I have my equation set equal to zero. Now I move it by subtracting on both sides. That cancels out over here, and my equation ends up being 2x squared minus 2x plus 3 equals 0. And now I can label A, B, and C. A is that first term attached to x squared, so a positive 2. B is a negative 2. C is a positive 3. And now I'm going to go through and just plug those three values into my formula. Once again, I would suggest just for practice sake and helping you to memorize it, it'll make it easier, I'm just going to write down the regular unsubstituted formula here. That's supposed to be a minus. Again, negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. And now we'll keep it red. We're just going to go through and substitute 2 for a, negative 2 for b, and 3 for a, c. Where you have to be careful, again, with your signs, this is negative b, which my b value is negative 2, so it's going to be a negative negative plus or minus, I actually do want to change this because it's getting kind of complicated already. Let's change it to pink. Sure, pink. Uh, plus or minus the square root of negative 2, which is my b value, squared, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 So now it's just going through order of operations. Negative, negative 2 is just a positive 2, plus or minus the square root. Negative 2 squared is a positive 4. And then for my minus 4ac, I've got negative 4 times 2 is negative 8. And then negative 8 times 3 is a negative 24. And that's all over 2 times 2, which is 4. So as you continue along the way, 2 plus or minus the square root of negative 20 
all over 4. Now you could continue if you don't realize what's going on, if you're not really aware of what we're doing or what we're looking at and you're just kind of stuck in the motions. What we should recognize here is that when we try and go through and evaluate this, like we did on the previous problem, we could split it off into 2 plus the square root of negative 20 all over 4 and 2 minus the square root of 20 all over 4. But as soon as you grab your calculator and you try and evaluate the square root of negative 20, you're going to get a syntax error, some other kind of error, your computer, your calculator are not going to be happy that you're trying to make it do impossible things. Because as we saw early in this chapter with 9.1 or even the kind of the precursor to 9.1, we don't know how to evaluate negative square roots. We can't do that in Algebra 1. That's a skill that we will investigate and look at in Algebra 2. But in Algebra 1, we don't know how to handle a negative square root. What do we have for our answer when it's something we don't know how to handle? There's no real solution. There's no way of handling a negative square root, so there's no real solution. That usually happens when you have a small C value and big A and, sorry, a small B value and a relatively big A and B value, where they're both positive. That's just where that usually happens, again, because that, that's when that first term is a smaller one, that second term is a big negative one underneath my radical, but that's what that looks like. If you go through and evaluate where you end up with a negative underneath your square root, that's when it's no real solution. Okay. So that's utilizing quadratic formula. If you're just asked to solve the equation, you could use this, especially in cases where you are stuck and don't know what else to do. You can't figure out how it factors. You aren't good with graphing or don't have a graphing calculator or Desmos available. This is kind of a go-to guaranteed way of getting your answer. Now, the second part of these notes are going to be utilizing the, underneath that radical to figure out how many solutions we will get. Because sometimes it doesn't really matter to us what the solutions are, but just knowing how many there are is going to be beneficial for us. And if you noticed, what ended up happening here underneath my radical for this second one, we ended up with a negative number and we didn't have any solutions. So what we're going to be doing is utilizing underneath that radical to figure out how many solutions there are. Now, that underneath the radical, instead of just saying that stuff underneath the radical, we have a specific name for it. It's called the discriminant. The discriminant. B squared minus 4AC is the discriminant. And what that value is, whether it's positive, negative, or zero, tells us how many solutions there are. Now we already saw two of those options. We saw what happens if my discriminant was bigger than zero, that was example A, we got two solutions. If our discriminant is positive, we can actually take the square root of it and get a number, and adding and subtracting it from that number gives us two different things. We saw what happens when our discriminant was less than zero, that was negative, that was no real solution. And here are just these arrows, as in if we have a negative discriminant, there are zero solutions. The one in the middle, we haven't seen yet, but if we had a discriminant that was exactly equal to zero, what would end up happening is, if we jump back up, and I'm going to come back down, if we looked here, like at this one, where we actually had something we could evaluate, if I had my discriminant exactly equal to zero, rather than doing the square root of 109, if I just took the square root of zero, I'd get zero. And when I add 0 to negative 5, I get negative 5. If I subtract 0 from negative 5, I still end up with negative 5. So in both of those, if that was the case, I'd end up with negative 5 over 6. The same exact answer both times. So what ends up happening, if I have a discriminant exactly equal to 0, 
I have exactly one solution. So what we're doing here for the rest of these is just utilizing the discriminant to identify how many solutions there are. So you don't have to go through and solve the whole thing. You don't have to tell me what the solutions are. You just have to tell me how many are there. So what we're going to doing for that, same kind of initial process, we still need to know what A, B, and C are, but then we're just doing the discriminant, just B squared minus 4AC. So here my A value is 1, my B is negative 2, my C is positive 4. So to figure out how many solutions, 2, 1, or none, we're just going to do B squared minus 4AC. So when I substitute that in there, B is negative 2, minus 4 times A times C. Oops, that's supposed to be squared there. Negative 2 squared is 4. Negative 1 times 1 times 4 is a negative 16. So I end up with negative 12. So since our answer is negative, there are zero solutions. No real, no, no real solution, an RS. We don't care what those solutions are. If we wanted to, we could go through and solve the whole quadratic formula for it. But in this case, they're just asking us how many there are. So I'm going to continue with the other ones. A is negative 3. B is 5. C is negative 1. So when I go through and do my discriminant, b squared minus 4ac, I end up with 5 squared minus 4ac. So 5 squared is 25. Negative 4 times negative 3 is a positive 12 times negative 1 is back to a negative 12. So we get 13. Positive number, two solutions. Positive number, two solutions. Now you can guess at what the next one's going to be, just based on my pattern. I have none, I have two. This is probably going to be one. But you never know. Sometimes like throwing curveballs at you. So again, identifying A, B, and C. Because all three of these, if you guys didn't notice, they were already equal to zero. So I can just jump right into identifying A, B, and C. If they weren't, rearrange them like we did in part B up above. A is negative 1. B is negative 10. C is negative 25. So b squared minus 4ac, we've been doing pink, right? Yeah. So b is negative 10, so negative 10 squared minus 4 times a of negative 1 times c, which is negative 25. Negative 10 squared is 100. And then looking at my other three terms here multiplied together, negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4, times negative 25 is negative 100. And hey, look at that. We get 0, which tells us there is exactly one solution. One solution. So that's it. That's what all three of them look like. That's how you would use your discriminant to determine how many solutions there are, it's just what's underneath that radical. Okay. So just make sure you're aware of what the instructions are asking you, especially on your homework. It is a, get a good mix of it, that's why I switched it to do every other even, just because you'll have some that ask you how many solutions there are, some that actually ask you to find the solution or solve the equation. So just make sure you're aware of what the instructions are asking you. So your homework for today, which is Monday, um, I think. I should have looked at what this, when this is coming in for the schedule. 
well, whenever you're supposed to be working on this, whatever notes I have this attached to, um, or whatever day I have these notes scheduled for, I'm just late on Saturday night recording this stuff for you. Um, your homework for this section, 9.5, is page 521, 4 through 40, every other even. All right, so guys, that, you know, that means multiples of 4. So you'll do 4, you'll skip 6. You'll do 8, you'll skip 10. You'll do 12, you'll skip six, or 14. You'll do 16, you'll skip 18. All the way through to number 40. Okay. With this, more so, you know, it's more important now than it ever has been to make sure you are asking questions. For those who are turning stuff in, I usually can figure out whether you're struggling or not. For those who haven't been turning stuff in or might feel like they can't start turn stuff in because they're so far behind, there is still time. You can still get your stuff turned in. There's still more than enough time to get everything caught up so you can still earn your credit for this year, for this semester. Because if you haven't done anything and you continue not doing anything, you're not going to finish the semester with your credit. You're going to have to retake all of semester two over again with me next spring. So if you have done okay or at least close to passing in quarter three, as long as you are making an effort and doing your work here in quarter four, you're making an effort and you're getting at least 70% of your stuff done, then you can still earn that credit for second semester. But if you're doing less than 70%, if you're not turning anything in, even if you had an A for quarter three, you're going to have to retake that over again. So please, please, please. Don't feel like it's too late. There's still enough time to get stuff turned in. If you are struggling with stuff, reach out and talk to myself or Mrs. Smith for those who are in with, with her class, or I guess anyone really could. Let us know that you're struggling, and we will find time to get you some extra help. Feel free to watch this video over again as many times as you need to. Slow it down, reverse it, play it, however, whatever makes sense to you. If you want to try and get some one-on-one -on -one help, those who have taken advantage of that while we're at home, um, I think have benefited greatly from that because being able to just talk to me and ask me questions is invaluable. It's totally like it's, it, it, it is so beneficial to you. So if you want to try Google Meet, that's fine. If you don't have great internet at home and you'd rather talk on the phone or just email back and forth, we can do either of those two things. I do have a way that I can call you guys without you having to use my cell phone number from home. So I can do that. If that's something that's easier for you, that you just want to talk on the phone, we'll just talk through some problems. Um, we, can, we can schedule something like that. You just got to let me know. Just reach out and let me know. Okay. I'm hoping everyone is doing well. I do miss you guys. I hope everyone is, is, is safe and, and, and doing their best. And I hope to hear from you guys soon. Have a fantastic day. I'll see you guys later.